appreciate everybody coming here. It really uh, means a lot that you guys would take the time to to come here uh, today. That gun, Mark. Um, all right. Um, you know, today's a special day for a lot of people, uh, a lot of schools, uh, everybody, the young men that have signed uh, across the country. It's a special day uh, for a lot of people. And for, I'd just like to start out by thanking uh, our staff. Uh, you know, we lost three coaches throughout December and January, and uh, I thought our staff did a phenomenal job, uh, you know, picking up areas where previous coaches had left. And uh, our guys just did a phenomenal job. They worked their tails off. Uh, we had some GAs, Kenneth Gilstrap and Omar McClendon, that went on the road and did a great job. Brent Brock uh, did a great job on the road. So we had a lot of guys, a lot of people really contribute uh, till we got our full staff hired. And uh, so I'm really appreciative of those guys and the effort uh, that our staff, Chris Matuzic, Eric Bartlett, everybody else, support staff that, that filled in and did a phenomenal job. So uh, I'd like to uh, recognize those guys uh, and appreciate their hard work and effort uh, in putting this class together. Uh, and then, like I said, you know, um, this is a special day for these young men because of all the hard work, the sacrifices that they've made. Uh, throughout their careers, their dream of playing college football started a long time ago. And for them to fulfill that dream and realize that dream and have this opportunity is a special day for them and um, really happy for them. And then uh, we're really, pr I'm, I'm proud, nobody's going to stand up here, no coach is going to stand up here and, and say anything uh, other than how uh, fired up, excited they are about their class. And uh, I've probably said this before, a parent has never looked at a newborn child and said, ooh, what an ugly baby. They always talk about how pretty it is and you know all that kind of stuff. And that's what college coaches do on today. But this is a really good class. I'm really excited about it. We, and you look across it, the, you go across the board, very seldom do you fill every position up there. Uh, you know, we got a quarterback, we got a running back, we got receivers, we got big guys in the offensive line, we got defensive linemen, we got linebackers, we got defensive ends, uh, we got guys on the back end, and we got a kicker. You know, so uh, I really feel good about our class. Uh, we'll know how good they are in a couple of years, and uh, you know how hard they come in here and work, how hard they compete, uh, the effort that they put forth in everything they do, but. I like the character of this class, uh, and I think that's where it always starts. I think you've got to have good character. You have got to have good guys, good people, uh, and then that goes into your locker room, and you have good people in there, men of character, uh, that are able to reach their goals, uh, able to overcome the adversity that they're going to be faced with throughout their careers. Uh, but they're very goal-oriented, uh, and, and it starts with academics uh, because that's the one thing that'll uh, enable them to be successful in life uh, is getting their education. So really looking forward to getting these guys here. I'll answer any questions that you have about any of them uh, individually or collectively as a group. So I'll turn it over to you guys. If you count Ty Lee, uh, obviously – didn't lose so much off of that position uh, this year, but uh, overstocking, so to speak. <laughs> Talk about the thought process there. Well, uh, we, we lost two starters. Uh, we lost another guy. So we lost three guys at the receiver position. So that was a critical position for us to fill and upgrade. Um, and I think we did that. We got two guys in there. One of our goals was to get bigger at the receiver position, and we did that. Uh, you know, we got two guys here now, Ricky and and uh, Jermel are here now, junior college guys, so that'll give them the opportunity to go through our winter workout program and, and spring ball. Um, and then those other guys, you know, CJ's got great size, uh, Reggie's got size, Ty's, a, you know, an all-purpose guy. He can 
do a lot of things. He's a really special athlete. Um, you know, he's been a running back. He's been a receiver. He's been in the kicking game. So I think he gives you some flexibility uh, that you can play him in a lot of different positions. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm really excited about this group and watching them get in here and compete. <clears throat> Your uh, midterm signees make up a lot of the star power of this class. What do guys like uh, Dane Dukes and Tyshawn Brown and Brian Kimbrough bring to the table from an impact perspective? Well, you know, they haven't done anything yet. And uh, we'll, we'll figure out Kimbrough, uh, where he'll fit in, you know, whether it's in the secondary, uh, whether it's a receiver, running back, or in the special teams. But uh, I don't get into all that star power stuff. We don't have any stars. Uh, they, they drop those stars off when they sign their name. So uh, everybody's the same. They'll all get in here and they'll work. They'll all get in here and compete. Um, but you go through, we lost three starters at linebacker, uh, you know, in a, in a backup. So getting some older, getting some age at the linebacker position was important. Um, and I think uh, Corey and uh, Dietrich will add some maturity, add some age to us there. Um, he's got Dietrich, you talked about him, has, has got some size. Uh, you know, Luck was a 235-pound, 240-pound linebacker. You know, so we, we've got a little girth in there with, with Dietrich. Uh, but I'm excited about the, the two high school linebackers that we signed also. They're athletic. They can run. Um, you know, so I think they'll bring, uh, you know, some athleticism also to the linebacking core. You mentioned in your opening comments the, the coaching changes and how you guys had to maybe reshuffle some guys around back on the trail. Did you find any hesitation from recruits and with things like that? It's, it's obviously something you haven't had to deal with in, in a few years, but what, what goes into, you know, overcoming those hesitations when a, when a guy talks about that? You know, uh, there was no hesitation. Most – this class – that we signed today has basically been committed since the 1st of January uh, when those coaches or two of those coaches were still here. You know, Cody left in December. Uh, but ma the majority of this class, with the exception of one, has been committed since uh, the 1st of January. So we didn't lose one, one player throughout this whole process. And then Ty, you know, we got – we brought in last week and you know we end up signing to him today so um, it had zero effect and that's a credit uh, to this university and to this football program that uh, it, nobody wavered just because a coaching change occurred and uh, like I tell our team uh, when I like I told our team anytime a coach leaves uh, I promise you I'm gonna get a good coach in here I'll get a uh, a good coach. And I told the recruits the same thing. I said, just trust me, believe in me, that I'll get it done. And, um, you know, they, they believed in our program. They believed in uh, the culture of this program and what we're doing. So that's why well, there was no hesitation. There was no wavering whatsoever of anybody we signed or recruited. Last thing I got for you, um, a few of the signees this year are going to be making some transitions to different positions that either they've, they've had little experience with in high school or even completely brand new to. Uh, Chris Myers comes to mind, uh, moving to defensive end. Um, Jordan Gonzalez obviously was really raw. What, what goes into to making those recommendations to a recruit? Is it, is it film review? Is it body style? What's the, the mindset there? Well, you know, Chris played defensive end. Chris was in our camp. Chris played defensive end uh, this year. They ended up playing mostly at tight end. Uh, if you remember his brother, uh, it was probably a little bit heavier than what Chris is coming out of high school, but really grew into a, a big, he's in the Super Bowl, you know, as an offensive lineman. Um, Chris has got a great body. There's no telling what he'll be. Um, when you, you look at 6'6", six, six, you know, whatever he is, 230 pounds, uh, you know, the upside to him is, you know, really high. Uh, so we'll give these guys time to grow. Jordan, I think, has got a chance to be, uh, you know, really, really special. He's, uh, and that's not saying Chris or these other guys can't, but 
here's again a 6'5", 240 pound guy in high school who's a really good basketball player. He's played defensive end, you know, that's where we've got him. Uh, there's no telling how big he can be. I mean, he's 240 now in high school running up and down a basketball court. Uh, you know, so when you, you look at him, he's allowed to be 260 by the time he gets here this summer. Uh, so he's got a great ceiling, a great upside uh, that potentially he can be a, a really, really big. He's, got, he's a quick twitch guy. He's got uh, great feet, obviously, because he's a good basketball player. Uh, you know, he's long because of his height, uh, you know, so I think those two guys have got a chance to be, you know, really, really big people. Since you signed uh, four offensive linemen, how many offensive linemen do you like to keep on scholarship basis? I know you dealt with injuries at that position last season. Uh, how many offensive linemen do you like to keep on scholarship, you know, each year in the league? Well, each position, although is – We'd like to have this many at each position. And at the uh, offensive line, we'd like to have 16. And, uh, you know, so that puts us at a number. And the big thing there is you'd like to have as many guys that can play multiple positions. And you look at Chandler Brewer. Chandler started at left tackle, you know, the first half of the year. And then he started at right guard the last half of the year. Daniel started at right guard half the year and then ended up at starting center the last half. So you've got to have – that's what you want, athleticism in your offensive line, and that's what we have, guys that can play multiple positions uh, because injuries are going to happen in this game. Uh, you know, but when you're running your 300-pound body into another man's 300-pound body in the offense and defensive lines, you're a little bit more susceptible to getting hurt. So uh, that's the number we'd like to be at. <clears throat> uh, your staff and what do you yourself look in at recruits during this process? What, what, what do you look for in recruits? Well, first of all, I tell our staff, don't recruit anybody, no matter how good they are, if they don't love football. And that's where it's got to start. You've got to love this game. Because, like I said, to run your 300-pound body into another man's 300-pound body isn't fun. And uh, you got to love doing that. So that's the first thing. That's where it starts. And then, you know, I talk about, you know, with the players, the, the recruits that we're recruiting with our staff, that I want winners, the guys that love the game, that winning means something that winning in the classroom is important, that winning in the weight room, that winning on the practice field, that winning uh, socially is, is important, that you want guys that are obsessed with being great. Uh, and if they like football or, you know, yeah, I'd like to get a degree, you know, or I'd, I'd like to bench press 300 pounds, but if I can only get 275, that's okay. I don't want them. I don't care how good they are, how talented they are, because it goes back to what I said last season. And as I said earlier today, character wins. If you've got guys that have great character and winning is important and, and being great at everything they do in the classroom, socially, in the weight room, on the practice field, if that's important to you, then you'll be a great football player. You'll be a great person, and you'll be able to accomplish what we want them to be able to accomplish in their time here at Middle Tennessee. And like I said earlier, the only guarantee that they've got coming here is the effort that they can put forth in getting their degree. Going to the NFL and being all-conference and all-American and all that, there's no guarantee on that. But you can get your degree, and if you'll get your degree, then you're on the right path to being successful in whatever chosen field you choose to go into. So that's where it starts at uh, in what we look for and recruit. Coach, uh, we in the media and, and the fans, we kind of have a tendency to uh, get caught up in uh, where a recruit is ranked, uh, where a recruiting class is ranked at nationally. Um, but but as for you, uh, your, recruiting, your recruiting classes don't rank very high, but you turn out NFL players, I think of, Players like Eric Walden and Kevin Byard, who are two-star players coming to high school, and um, Walden got some NFL time. Byard's about to. Um, 
from a coach's perspective, do you pay attention to the rankings? Do you pay attention to these uh, these recruiting databases on on the internet, or do you just see the player? I could care less about stars, and you know, you want good players. You have to do, you know. We have to do a great job of evaluating players. We have to do a great job of project, projecting players because, you know, how many five stars have ever been here? None. How many four stars? You know, those guys are going to the Alabamas of the world. And that's okay because stars don't determine. You watch this game Sunday. I guarantee you there's a handful of five stars, a handful of four stars, and everybody else is two and three stars. Once you get here, that's what I said earlier, drop them stars when you signed your name. Uh, we, it doesn't mean anything. It's, it doesn't mean you're going to play. It's about when, what you do when you get this opportunity wherever you go to school. How, how you're going to compete, how hard you're going to work in there. We got players in there that got two stars that I promise you are out working guys at some bigger school with five stars because it goes back to they love football. They love being great. You know, that there's the, the entitlement that, hey, I'm a five star, four star, whatever, you know, you're not going to walk in and automatically be the starter. You got to earn everything you get. So uh, we're going to recruit good players, and then once we get them, it's our job as coaches to develop that talent, to coach that talent, to make them a three-star, to make them a four-star, to make them an NFL prospect. And and I, I've got great, take great satisfaction. We've got a great coaching staff, and we've been able to. In every from strength to coaching on that field, that we've able we've been able to develop guys that the so-called star stuff, you know, uh, to give them an opportunity to reach their full potential, uh, playing in the NFL or being All-American in, in college or All-Conference in college, whatever they want. So I could give a whatever about stars. You know, it, it bothers me, you know, I don't see how people can rank all these players in the country, uh, you know, and give them stars because there's no way you can evaluate them. And I've seen guys committed to a Conference USA school that have two stars. And then all of a sudden, a Power Five school offers them and shoot all of a sudden they're a three star all of a sudden they're a four star so stars don't mean anything you got to prove you've got to earn everything you get once you step on that campus coach you you, you talked about i know you want to build your recruiting base from here out did you feel like you did what you wanted to do and got what you wanted to get in state this time yeah, Chip, we're always going to start in Tennessee, and I've said that since I've been here. There's great uh, high school coaching in this state. There's great high school players in this state. And we're always going to start here, and if we can fulfill our needs in the state of Tennessee, we'll fulfill them. If we can't find what we need at any particular position in this state, then we'll go out of state and find that position. So. Uh, I have great respect for the coaches here in this state. I have great respect uh, for the high school football players in this state. One last thing for me. Would it be fair to say that the biggest change in recruiting in your career has been the cell phone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was uh, – I don't know when the fax machine was invented, but this is the first time – in my coaching career, college co coaching career, that I never got a fax. We didn't get one fax this year um, from a signee. You know, you used to everybody used to stand over the fax machine, wait for it to come in. Now you, they just they can take a picture of it and send it to you on their phone, and and you're good to go. So uh, it's really different. You can't text 
You're not allowed to text, but you can DM on Twitter. What's the difference? Uh, you know, so th this cell phone, man, it's, uh, it, it, it's really changed. It's so much easier now to get a hold of kids. Uh, you used to have to call that, that house phone, that landline, and uh, you'd never get them. You'd talk to mom, dad, everybody. Now you, you got instant access to them. So the cell phone technology today has uh, really changed uh, the landscape of recruiting. Uh, over the last couple of years, obviously, uh, you know, you get more exposure with more TV games, Conference USA, and then going to the bowl game. Has recruiting progressively gotten easier and easier to sell kids on coming here? You know, I don't that, – that's a good question. It really is. I, I don't think – I don't think going to the bowl, the bowl game, I don't think Conference USA, those two factors – have helped, you know, tenfold, whatever. It helps, obviously, it helps because you can say, hey, we're going to bowl games, we're on TV, we're in a good conference. All that stuff goes into the pie, but I think the big thing is they see what we're doing here. They see the culture of this program. They see the results that we're putting out there of our kids academically. They see how we're coaching them. They see how we're treating them. They see their opportunities to go to the NFL or be successful uh, in whatever chosen field. So I think all that helps, but I think a bigger picture of that is I can accomplish all my goals at Middle Tennessee. And, and I think it's, you know, I've been here 10 years now. And, you know, just the, the culture of our total program I think is, I hope is the main reason guys come to school here. But now you've, you, you've got proof that, hey, we're going to bowls, we're, we're winning, we're putting a great product on the field, we're being, our kids are being successful, you know, professionally in the NFL as well as in whatever career. So I think you throw all that into the pie, uh, it makes it a easier sell. With that being said, do you find yourself from when you first got here to now maybe getting a few more of those guys that maybe you wouldn't have gotten before that all of a sudden, you know, you're finding yourself, okay, yes, we got that guy. Maybe it was where I was here 10 years ago. Maybe we wouldn't have got that player. You know, I'm going to answer this, but I'm going to say it first. With This is no disrespect to the program, the coaches before I got here because <clears throat> the easy thing would be to say, yeah, we're getting a better player now. And that would be disrespectful to the program before me and the coaches before me, and I'll never do that. So, uh, But this program has changed a ton in 10 years. You know, we're winning. When, when, and again, I, I'm hesitant to say this because it looks like I'm throwing shade on, on people, and I don't mean to do that. But when I got here, we had four straight losing seasons. Now we're winning. We've been bowl eligible seven out of ten times. We're graduating our guys at 96%. 96% graduation rate. We're on TV. At we're in a better conference than what we were when I first got here. There's more exposure. You know, our facilities, you know, we're in the same buildings. We're in the same weight room. We're in the same – but we've, we've remodeled it. You know, we've, we've – you know, so in ten years – the, where we've where we were and where we are now, again, it's we've got a a better culture, a better product to entice a. And again, this is no disrespect to the players, uh, you know, a player that we might not have been able to get ten years ago. So uh, I'm just really proud after ten years to just where this program has come you know, how far we've come and what we've done in these 10 years. <clears throat> um, Rick, I noticed that you've got eight of the guys that are signees that are already enrolled. That seems like a high number, especially for you. With that in mind, I'm guessing that you're assuming that 
a lot more guys may be able to, a lot of those guys especially, but guys in this class may be able to step in and you're going to see them quicker, sooner rather than later. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, you know, Dan, you're right. We're, you're, we, were, we signed, uh, we had 20 players graduate into the bowl game. We had, so we had 20 players. So you can, rep, we could have replaced 20 guys at midterm. Nobody can do that. Uh, but when you have that many guys graduate, it affords you the opportunity to bring more guys in. And then you look at each position of the midterm guys were critical areas of need to replace what we lost. You know, so we got two receivers in. You know, we got two offensive linemen in. You know, we got a linebackers. We got uh, a corner. You know, so uh, a safety. So we, we, we were able to replace, and those were – critical need areas so uh, I'm hopeful that because they're here and able to go through our winter conditioning program and go through spring practice that that'll enable them to compete you know for playing time you know this fall. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you about too was this day can be a lot of uncertainty kids flipping cherry picking guys here and there guys doing all kinds of crazy stuff you've mentioned a couple times the fact that you had a pretty good idea who these kids were, where they were coming from, to have that sense of not ease, because it's never easy, but not have your heart pitter pattering and wondering what's going to happen and what's going on, is, is that, I got to think that's nice. Is that, is it, is that nice? Is that e relaxing? So you, never speak? Relax. <laughs> you, you never relax. You never relax as a player, as a coach, as a recruiter. You can never relax because – that 12th hour, you know, we've, we've lost them at, you know, at midnight on Tuesday night uh, before. You know, we've lost them at, you know, you always worry as a coach when you call Tuesday night and you can't get a hold of them, you're always worried then. And we were able to get a hold of everybody last night, so you sleep a little bit easier. Um, but, again, it's you, you never relax, relax. But we didn't go to bed last night you know, with a lot of uneasiness. And, and, and I say this a lot, that, you know, we've recruited, and everybody in the country, you recruit these guys for a year, some of them for more than a year. And if they don't know where they're going Tuesday night, I just find that hard to believe, that I'm going to wake up Wednesday morning and decide where I'm going. It makes no sense to me how you're going to decide that. So... Uh, but again, I just it, it, this recruiting deal, nobody will ever figure it out. It's it's impossible to figure out what guys uh, how they sometimes make decisions. But uh, I just Dan, I thought our staff did a phenomenal job again, and uh, but I slept pretty good last. I didn't sleep very long, but I slept pretty good when I when I went to bed. So felt good about it. Coach, you could probably use the – every team uses the hashtag family somewhere along the way. You guys take it to a different level. Have you ever been on a, on a, in a program that had two sons of two coaches on the roster? Yes, sir. I, you know, I, uh, let me think here. Uh, Les Heron at Clemson. Les Heron and Deke were there. Um, I think he was the only one at the time. Well, you caught me off guard here, Chip. Tommy Bowden, Brad Scott had his son Jeff there. I'm trying to think if if uh, anybody else was there, but no, it's a uh, probably not. I don't know. Without thinking too hard about it, I may be wrong on it. But this is a. Uh, I, I hope I hope Ty embraces it and enjoys it. Uh, as much as I have, and because uh, it, it it'll be special for him uh, to be able to, like I said, just to sit on that bench over there, and you know, Ty walk across the. How was your day? You know, how was school? Just to be able to do that uh, because you miss so much in this profession of your kids uh, growing up. But uh, it, 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 I hope I hope Ty enjoys it, and I know he will.